In 1541, Francesco Doriana and Gonzalo Pizarro, along with a couple of hundred Spaniards and a few thousand Incas, who were the native people of Peru, left Guayaquil in western Peru for the inland. Their mission was to find the cinnamon land or El Dorado, which was rumored to be rich in wealth such as gold, spices, etc. They left in February of 1541 and started a tough and slow march towards the east. They first had to track past the treacherous mountain complex of the Andes, which took a long time and killed a lot of their men. Before making it over the mountains, already more than 3,000 natives and 140 Spaniards had either deserted or died. So after a harsh start, Oriana and his men finally could descend from the mountain ranges and now started to get closer to the huge Amazon basin, which at the time was a lot bigger than it is today. Today the Amazon forest stretches over 5.5 million square kilometers and in 1541 it was even bigger than that. This was also unexplored land for any foreigner. No European or traveler had ever set foot in this humongous land. Oriana and his expedition were the first and they didn't know what to expect. The Amazon Basin is a tough place to survive in, especially if you're not used to the climate. The tropical weather makes it wet and moisture, and it's full of deadly insects and diseases. However, Oriana and his men kept pushing on. Something must have really drove them. That something could have been rumors that kept spreading in the crew. Tales of a built city, built only of solid gold, were heard. Also rumors of a great civilization, rich and wealthy. The Spaniards' lust for gold were world famous, so that's probably why they kept on going. In the autumn of 1541, many more of the crew members had died, mainly because they lacked provision. In some cases, they even ate their own horses because they didn't have enough to eat. The expedition had to do something. Soriana and 50 other of his men left the rest of the expedition in a boat downstream in search of food. But the stream worked against them. When they were going to return, and even though Oriana sent three messengers to contact Pizarro and the rest of the expedition, they were separated. Oriana and his 50 men had to continue on their own, and kept sailing downstream, getting further and further into the jungle. The entire journey of Oriana is pretty well documented. Somehow they successfully sailed all the way through the Amazon River from west to east alive. And what's interesting in Oriana's expedition is their record of a huge civilization in the middle of the Amazon. The expedition said they saw cities bigger than anything ever existing in Europe. Cities with hundreds of thousands of inhabitants built all around the Amazon River. So decades later, when the other explorers came to see these gigantic cities Oriana was talking about, they found nothing. And since then it has been the view of mainstream science and history that Oriana and his expedition simply were lying and making the whole story up. The Amazon is after all a very bad place to grow crops on. The earth isn't at all as fertile as one might believe. Therefore no big civilization could ever have been able to maintain and feed hundreds of thousands of inhabitants. But in recent years, as our civilization continues to cut down the trees in the Amazon rainforest, and after all the big forest fires in the rainforest lately, these cities begin to emerge again out of nowhere. So what happened to the cities when the explorers that came after Oriana didn't find anything? Well, a very large amount of the natives living in the Amazon got infected by foreign diseases such as smallpox that came all the way from Europe. The natives hadn't been in contact with these diseases for at least 12,000 years and therefore had no immunity whatsoever against them. So when the explorers that came after Rodiana was looking for these cities, they were long gone. Almost all inhabitants had died off and the rainforest very quickly covered the tracks that they had ever existed, until now. A lot of very weird geometrical structures appear as the rainforest is beginning to clear away. And uh, what they were used for, nobody knows, but nevertheless they keep appearing in large numbers all over the Amazon. As you can see in the images here, uh, this is what they look like and uh, they're very weird, you know, sometimes they have a circle inside of a square and sometimes a square inside of a circle. I mean, it reminds me a bit of Stonehenge and uh, maybe we used for some sort of uh, astronomical uh, science or something like that. We're not sure. Uh, we'll simply have to do more research. And uh, there is still much more to be discovered. 
The most part of the Amazon rainforest is actually still to this day unexplored, and there's probably a lot more to find in there. The most recent estimated amount of inhabitants existing in the Amazon in the early 16th century is now over 30 million people. Just a couple years earlier, that number was way smaller. This again shows that we don't know everything and that there is still so much more to be discovered out there. So, how could these large cities emerge in the first place when the soil and earth is so hard to grow anything in? A very interesting suggestion is that the natives of the Amazon found a way to make their own soil. Nobody really knows how, but uh, there's a lot of evidence for that they did it. This soil is found all over the Amazon, and scientists know it's not occurring naturally. This soil is called dark earth or terra preta. It's a very complicated soil and it's incredibly fertile. One could almost grow anything on it, and with way faster results than in any normal soil. It's still a mystery how they came up with it, but hopefully more research will be done on this matter, since it's still a very recent discovery, although research have been able to carbon date some of these soils, and they date as far back as between 2000 to 8000 years ago. That means that whoever came up with the dark earth did so a long time ago. Perhaps what we're looking at here is a long lost ancient civilization. We will simply have to see in the future. Hope you enjoyed this video guys. Um, write anything you think in the comments. Um, and if you like this video, uh, please leave a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.